Hello, my name is Vibora Schmittek. I'm from the University of Duisburg Essen. And uh, today I want to uh, um, present some experiences uh, I've made within the Network of Excellence, uh, the funded project. And um, it's going to be a, a little different talk from the Marcus talk um, since um, yeah, it, it addresses uh, rather people who are currently uh, stuck in groups in SMW or uh, are currently evaluating it or for using it for their own project. Uh, since we, uh, I will present um, our experiences uh, from also um, from the idea we had to the first realizations uh, we had um, with the semantic media wiki of these ideas. So, first of all, I will give a short um, uh, uh, summary of uh, the Nessos project, and then uh, from the idea to the realization, it's going to be uh, the requirements that we talk about, and uh, the design of the concepts, and the realization with the semantic media wiki, and uh, yeah, and have uh, some uh, words on the experience we made and what we are planning to do uh, for the next steps. So, what is Nessos? It's uh, a network of excellence uh, on engineering secure software and services. Um, it consists of 12 partners from industry and academia, um, in all at uh, about 200 researchers. And uh, the project lasts uh, three and a half years, which uh, started uh, yeah, last October. So we are currently at year one, just finished. And uh, this is what uh, I'm going to present, um, what we have done so far in year one. So the aim of Nessos is to build a long-lasting research community in the field of security, uh, secure engineering, secure software and services. And uh, why was that necessary also to be funded? Yeah, the, if you look at the research uh, in this security field, you see that it is quite, uh, uh, endeavors are cluttered um, along different research streams. We have, uh, of course, the security engineering uh, research field, but we have um, uh, software engineers concerned with security issues and service engineers and also the um, broad field of formal methods people who are also um, concerned with security. And the aim was to align research agendas within this project so that people uh, work more together and maybe unlock uh, um, 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 unused potential um, by um, bridging the gap between these disciplines. Uh, yes. So, and what's the part of the common body of knowledge which the University of Duisburg Essen um, is contributing to the project? Well, a network of uh, uh, the, this, uh, the challenge of the network of excellence is that there are those different <coughs> communities that uh, have to grow together, and uh, this actually means that you have uh, people from with different backgrounds and different mindsets. They have uh, different research results um, which may overlap but may not, but uh, this is uh, not clear and obvious. And we have different terminologies um, spoken in the different research streams, so it uh, gets sometimes a bit difficult to um, the community to talk with each other. And um, these are the points that um, the body of knowledge addresses to um, uh, support the building and integration of this uh, community and uh, addressing these um, uh, uh, challenges. Um, there are already um, body of knowledges available like project management body of knowledge and, or the software engineering body of knowledge. Maybe some of you heard of this. Um, it's um, actually a book but also an HTML version available. Um, which basically <coughs> was written by 400 uh, people from uh, research and from academia and industry to um, have a definition of what software engineering is all about, what, uh, um, how it is split into maybe different knowledge areas. And um, so it helped that uh, finally, after long discussions, it took two years to come up with the software engineering body of knowledge. 
um, to create a better self-understanding. Um, until then, it was not so clear what actually um, software design and or software architecture actually comprises. There were no definitions, or there are definitions, but uh, too many. So um, it helped to create a common sense. And uh, the basis, it, it is now serves also as a basis for educational curricula. So um, it's, uh, I think, a big step forward for this software engineering body of knowledge. So uh, we thought that um, this could be a um, good starting point uh, with our body of knowledge endeavor. Um, and so we, we try to um, um, also reuse the concepts of the software engineering body of knowledge for our body of knowledge, but um, um, go some steps further. That actually means that we want to have uh, this uh, collaborative aspect more uh, in, in focus. That means that we don't not only want to invite authors to contribute to the, to the body of knowledge, like it was done for the software engineering body of knowledge, but um, to realize um, um, that it is, uh, the body of knowledge is something evolving and that it has to be um, yeah, maintained and uh, extended um, all the time. And that is uh, um, one approach is to do that in a collaborative fashion. The other step we want to go further is to um, provide additional knowledge access options. If you have a book, you have a table of contacts, you have an index, or you can choose requirements engineering and see all the stuff which is, uh, which is described in this uh, field. Uh, if you have a take a HTML version, you have maybe a full text, read, a full text search, but um, we want to also have something like, um, I realized something that uh, some queries like show me all security requirements engineering methods that use UML and um, you know how difficult it is uh, to do this with a HTML or a book format. So we started from scratch. We did not know what platform to use. Um, so we tried to. Um, drill down the goals into requirements and did an evaluation of different um, tools ranging from application types like portals, uh, wikis, um, or um, social networks, um, document management systems. I won't go too much into detail on that, but uh, just pick some few of them. Um, it should be easy and intuitive to use to lower um, usage barriers, um, yeah, there should be this collaborative aspect in it, and for quality assurance we needed some access rights management, we need this elaborate search functionality, and we wanted to uh, the software to be able to realize the sweep of concepts, and um, the common terminology idea, uh, and we want not to program too much, um, or rebuild the system from scratch because uh, of, of course of uh, time and uh, budget constraints and uh, we wanted to have adequate licensing options because uh, the community should survive the funding period and if there are annual fees, uh, licensing fees, it would not fit into the concept. And we want also to be able to generate a book out from the, um, from the CBK at, least, at, at last. And after a long evaluation period and many Excel sheets, uh, uh, we, we realized, and uh, if you see this, uh, it's clear for you, but for us it, it was uh, some kind of insight that the semantic media uh, is a product which uh, um, uh, uh, um, cover most of the uh, requirements. So, just two slides on the concepts to give an idea of how we, um, uh, what we wanted to realize with the semantic media wiki. We had the technological platform, but uh, now we needed some some structuring, and we came up with uh, knowledge areas, a concept adapted from the three book. That means uh, the knowledge areas span the whole field, research field of software engineering, starting from 
requirement in engineering, software architecture, software design, uh, testing, maintenance, development, and so on. And uh, we have had, of course, these uh, I, um, knowledge object types, like on, on, on tools and methods and notations and uh, things like this. And actually, the actual instances, the knowledge objects, like a concrete tool, like a secure URL or magic Google. And we wanted to be able to relate those knowledge objects uh, to knowledge areas, one uh, and more, and um, to have um, instantiations of knowledge objects. So tools might have other attributes like uh, than methods or notations. And um, we wanted also to be able to relate each knowledge object to each other, saying something like the tool X epsilon uh, is um, supported, uh, supports the method um, Magic Google, for example. That is uh, this arrow. And of course, um, we came up then uh, the end state would be um, a network of knowledge objects. So this was the plan. <coughs> And uh, we did realize this plan. Um, I also won't go into detail on that. Mm -hmm. That actually uh, the ontology behind that, uh, with a new other presentation, um, you can ask me for further details or look it up. And uh, I published this uh, recently. So, how did we realize this finally with the semantic media wiki? We have this knowledge objects uh, which are actually ontology individuals or, or wiki pages in the semantic media wiki. Knowledge object types, which were which are uh, which we realize as ontology classes or wiki categories, and um, templates which which represented the different knowledge object types and the attributes. So we had different forms and representations for each and every um, type of knowledge, like if you have, a, for example, Magic Google is a tool, you see there the KO type is tool, and this uh, page belongs to the category tool. Um, you can see here that we, we related this, the concrete tool, um, this knowledge object, to um, two different knowledge areas, um, which are modeled in the Ontology, security architecture and design, and the software quality and security requirements. Um, ah, you also see that uh, this really much, pretty much looks like the Wikipedia format with the info box and the content box. We um, uh, consciously choose this layout because also of uh, entry barriers because people rec um, recognize this and are used to uh, this format. Um, and we introduced this context problem solution consequences sections. Maybe some of you um, recognize this. Uh, these are typical um, sections for patterns. So we, we describe each knowledge object in the form of a pattern in the sense of that we gave context information, um, the problem uh, which exists, and how this knowledge object, this concrete tool in this case, um, solves this problem including the consequences. If I use this tool, uh, which uses UML, which is based on UML, maybe I cannot use uh, something else, which is something um, uh, described in the consequences section. Um, the creation of semantically enriched wiki pages realized with semantic forms, of course. Um, and we used the tab extension to group the different attributes um, because there were actually many of them. Um, you see many um, free text fields here. Um, that's, um, we discussed a lot about this, but uh, we did not want to, we want to uh, formalize everything, which is not possible, but we want to be able to compare at least uh, all executive summaries with each other, for example, for, for a brief uh, sum up all the other projects. But we also have a more formalized uh, stuff, like um, these um, binary relations. Um, maybe you remember the um, figure we had on those 
knowledge objects related or belonging to knowledge areas. Um, and that is realized by the multiple instance template um, feature, this method media wiki, and you can here choose um, the, uh, from um, a given set of values, it's probably an enumeration, um, a concrete knowledge area, and um, have, because of the, of the enary um, fashion, uh, the possibility to add more than just one. We also, maybe you remember the possibility to relate knowledge objects of each and any kind with each other, like uh, one method supports the other or is a sub-method of another uh, method, or supports, uh, is supported by a tool. Um, this is realized also by uh, this binary relation. We have this add another button and put in one or many um, relations to other knowledge objects. We have this autocomplete functionality, which is very helpful for the user. And we can uh, qualify the relation by putting in an attribute, um, saying in this case something like, um, this method is supported by the tool, and then we choose one of the tools. We also make use of semantic queries. Um, this is a very, quite simple one. It's just lists all the available knowledge objects um, in a table, um, and you can sort it and you how, um, sort it as you like it on you know, each and every attribute. Um, it's always up to date. You don't have to rewrite those uh, um, those tables created with semantic queries. And a more advanced um, semantic query is uh, um, represented on this page. It's there are actually many semantic queries on this page. Uh, the aim was, um, maybe you remember, to create also a handbook out of the, um, all the contents within the wiki. And this is uh, realized by the diversity of uh, semantic queries. And you can see here some LaTeX uh, tags. And um, we just um, take this text put it in a LaTeX editor and uh, create a PDF. So a um, future idea would, of course, be to automatize, uh, automize this. Um, but um, this was um, yeah, realizable, and we were happy, really happy about that, because um, in the first place, we were unsure if the Semantic Media Wiki would anyhow uh, do that, but it was possible. So as I said, we are currently at month 12, so two and a half years more to come. We started with the evaluation of platforms and the initial version of the structure, which is uh, evolved by the community. Um, and uh, we are currently in the phase, in the inception phase. It's a more or less uh, closed uh, group um, 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 set up in the sense of that um, now other people, but the people from the network um, can contribute to the, the body of knowledge to have a sound basis. And um, I think that's a big requirement if you want to launch a public wiki to have uh, um, um, some added value. And the added value of a community wiki is really the contents. And uh, so it's <coughs> really very important to have this inception phase before opening it up to the public on month 24 in one year. So currently it's not uh, published, uh, available, so if you'd like to have a view on it, uh, just ask me afterwards um, and we can have a look on this. But uh, it will be definitely open to the public. Uh, we promise that to the European Union, so um, there will be this uh, publicly available, and that's the sense of uh, the idea of research, of course. So uh, we just have to wait and work. So, um, what were our experiences when we started it one year ago? The evaluation was a bit tedious, uh, at least um, uh, at that point in time, because there were, was no installer available, no virtual machine, and we really uh, had to set up everything from the web server to the MySQL and media wiki, semantic media wiki, uh, using the um, framework to download those extensions was, a, was a helpful, but 
uh, it took a lot of time, and uh, I think it was a good uh, step forward to introduce this installer because it, uh, yeah, it does not. Yeah, if I want to evaluate something, I don't want to uh, have uh, spend too much time on that. And um, so I think um, that's really good. It takes time to unlock the full potential, or it took me some time to realize how it all works together. The, the semantic forms, the templates, and uh, the properties, and the leaking pages, but um, um, then it made click, and then I realized, oh, what, what's possible with this? And um, I was really uh, convinced um, after a while. And um, the really good thing is the Bible community. We are sitting here together with all those people really interested in this uh, semantic media wiki, and, and, and uh, developing it, and bringing it forward. and. Um, I spent a lot of time on the forum and there was always a quick response and I think um, that's really important and it's there. So what I can advise to those uh, who are also starting with semantic media wiki, learn from good other real world um, semantic, media, uh, media, semantic media wiki projects since uh, all the of source code is actually available. Um, and um, you can really look at it and, and learn from it, and yes, and it, it helps a lot. Um, and besides of the technical issues, might be organizational ones. If you just put in and set up a wiki uh, in an organization or in a network, in our case, um, it will not live automatically. It has you have to have uh, some organizational means to uh, have this wiki really run and successful and um, because uh, people don't would, won't um, automatically use it uh, because it's there. So after one year, I'm really happy to say the semantic wiki, media wiki was the right choice. And um, yeah, that's my last slide. I presented this, what we have already realized so far, the collaborative creation of the common body of knowledge, the creability of the common body of knowledge. And we were able to map the three book structure with the knowledge areas and knowledge objects with the help of Semantic Media Wiki. We realized this handbook generator. Um, but we are now currently working on uh, three tasks and I hope I will find some answers on this or uh, the day tomorrow. Uh, on, on this um, topics, which um, are currently, um, yeah, um, we are concerned with community-driven ontology evolution. It means that we have those knowledge areas, but we also want to the community to be able to maybe uh, shape with us, not top down, but bottom up the the, the current ontology and. Um, I haven't read too much about this, but maybe uh, some of you can hit on or point on some uh, sites which are already doing this. Uh, as I said, learning from other SMW sites is a very good thing. We also have to realize this common terminology, so we have some kind of glossary from which we can, uh, to which we can relate um, words uh, from one research stream uh, and from others, so we can have some kind of reference system, so everyone talks of the same uh, thing, um, and maybe some of you have seen this out there, and we really want to look at comparison of user-selected individuals, so that I can choose one, two, or three knowledge objects, like to A, B, or C, and have them uh, in, in all in one column, and the attributes uh, next to them, so I can really s compare um, the attributes, and. Uh, Maybe some of you have an idea of uh, how to realize this, or uh, if there is an um, uh, extension. Um, yeah, but that's for me for now. From this side, if there are any questions, um, you can ask them now. Otherwise, thank you very much. this issue with the community-driven ontology evolution. Have you made up your mind somehow? Do you have an, a, an idea how you want to tackle this problem? Um, actually, not really, but um, 
I, I have read some uh, papers about that, but they have uh, taken a different approach and with different software system. And um, I can tell you later, but nothing with this Metal Media Wiki so far. Um, maybe I haven't looked detail on that too much right now. Yes? What is your environment? Do you have uh, Not. The environment and the OS and the Oh, it's a uh, uh, Windows 2008 server system, and with the Windows installer, um, you sign it. Do you use RBI? Um, no. no. Not, not me, at least. Um, some other researchers uh, try to um, uh, get it out on that and reuse it, but uh, I promise I don't need it. So, once you've got it in the trip, so it should be easy to, to realize your third point. Okay. So uh, not on the wiki page itself, but then uh, on within this tool. Okay. Yeah. But it would be very nice to have the user, uh, which uh, later will use this wiki, to be able to compare pages with each other. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there are some already some, some infrastructural extensions like this uh, assisted search and um, so and, and the results formats. Um, maybe a combination of this will do it, but uh, currently I don't have a hundred percent idea. Another thing last year there was a release, so probably you had to pay for it. Yes, yes, I remember yeah, that, 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 that was quite so sure yes, but yes, uh, but of course, yes. So you mentioned the organization yes, uh, how do you make your users actually use the wiki? Um, we, um, all, all partners in the network have person month on that, yes. but uh, that does not, uh, is not enough because uh, we have deadlines set up and in the first place, just deadlines, and uh, the people did not deliver. Some of them did, but some not. And uh, we really had to um, do the evaluation on, on, on the whole wiki, who had done what so far, and in what quality, and then write emails to each partner, and so on. And it was very time consuming. And um, but um, the more individual, uh, the more knowledge objects are in this page, and the more functionality we offer back to the network, I, I um, really have the feeling that people realize uh, the usefulness of this, and they are uh, more um, uh, more willing to, to, to contribute than later. But it took some time. It's now in the first uh, after the first year, and the situation got better now. But in the beginning, it was very really horrible. Uh, Have you looked at how Intellipedia has, has made to grow it by, by giving incentives? Simple things like giving a note for the guy every month to people that do the best uh, thing. And there are simple incentives for small presses. Yeah, maybe, maybe some kind of point system for each like and every edit or a new page shown. Um, Acknowledge people for what they do. But yes. I would look at Intellipedia, there's something about how they... Uh, how is it called? Intellipedia. Intellipedia. The wiki okay. of the American uh, intelligence community. All right. And they have also had this problem, how do we get people mm -hmm. involved? So we do other search in there. Okay, area. that's a good thing. Thank you. In the same vein, there's a website called wikipatterns.com. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely spectacular for identifying good patterns in your organization yeah. for getting adoption and patterns for right. going explicitly. Read it, you'll recognize a couple things you already do, it gives a name for them, and you'll learn a few new tricks. Alright, okay. there are a few books on the subject as well. Yes, right. yes, yes, right. Absolutely, yes. Okay, that's from me now. Thank you very much, and uh, I think it's copy break time now. Thank you. Thank you.